the heck? What the heck? That was ridiculous. That so it shut it down and it said you violated community guidelines for trying to illegally sell goods and services. <laughs> I, I can't I cannot believe that. I that's never happened to me before. First of all, I first of all, what what first of all, why is that their policy? Second of all, I was talking about a Jim Carrey movie. I, I don't know. Sometimes I don't know. Oh, God, that pisses me off. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's like a bot situation where they scan for certain things. And they I'm heard sure it's beep- an... They heard yeah. the beeping in your background outside your window, and the beeping triggered something. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, oh. these are all theories. Uh, I just think it's not... Uh, I just think algorithmically, TikTok is perhaps kind of evil. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah, maybe. Oh, am I? Is anybody any powers that be going to come <laughs> down and okay. strike me? I mean, most everybody came back, so hopefully they will find it. There are trigger words for the bots. Okay, so <laughs> we're not going to say S E L L, and we're not going to say the L the L word. <laughs> I d- yeah, right. Jim Carrey. Maybe it was Jim Carrey. <laughs> I could see him being banned. Oh, we're not allowed to Ridiculous. Talk. Okay, well, we were talking about, I mean, we were having a discussion on magical <laughs> surrealism. Yes. You were talking about the book that <sighs> you felt you connected with. Yeah, that I read. I read a book. The Beyond the Rising Tide. I read a book, no M-O-N-E-Y involved in the after, and after the fact. So I don't know why they would call us out but anyway uh yeah it was i mean i just i thought it was really beautiful it was about uh, a kid who was like a ghost who's like who like saved a girl and then he watches over it's it's just really really cool um and i love stuff like that um i'm a big geek on paranormal horror fantasy stuff i'm not a big geek on it i'm like I want to be a big geek on it. Like, I love it uh, in in an existential way. Because, mm-hmm. like, intellectually, I love it. And I watch a sh- shartload of horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can talk like myself. Uh, God. No, I, think, I think you can. You can. I don't know. I really just don't know what happened. I think I'm you- always just, I'm always just promoing. I'm always just promoing and trying to earn a D-O-L-L-A-R. Oh, God. <laughs> this has ruined my tactics for oh, business. You know, maybe was it Jacob trying to get in on this? Oh, yeah, my good friend. Mm-hmm. My good leprechaun friend. You know, I, I don't buddy think... buddy Jacob Morgan? Yeah, I don't think he's... Uh, I think, I, I, as far as I know, he's super hungover. Um, he and I don't chat as much anymore, but I don't know, maybe, yeah, we're like, we're leading different lives. And plus he's so successful now that he doesn't need me. He doesn't need me. (laughs) I, uh, I saw some people, a few comments when I was mentioning that you guys were friends and that he might stop by, Mm -hmm. um, that you have a lot of, you feel a lot of competition, with him because a sure, lot of people I, a lot of people think you guys sound very similar oh that's interesting yeah i mean i guess he does an okay american accent but it just doesn't sound that natural i think he sounds too brooding like he's just like trying to force it hmm. and i mean i don't know it's kind of grotesque you know i just don't like when i just don't like english and australian actors like people from other countries like taking like american roles so when it's like Mm. you know i was doing this stuff like as a favor to him back in the day like years ago and he just sort of took it and ran with it and i and i'm and that's fine that's fine Mm -hmm. you know he takes all the stuff all the like all the all the heavy stuff uh so i don't have to do as much of that lifting anymore Mm -hmm. which is nice but you know it's it's gone to his head his big his big leprechaun head and you know it's just like you don't need to wear a green hat you already have the accent mm. yeah he's 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 irish i don't know if you know but he's uh 
I did not know that he was Irish. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's he's um he's Irish, and he I, I I you know we used to be friends. I just he's I've lost friends before, but this one this one really hurts. He's he's not he's not a good guy. <laughs> oh, maybe he's jealous of you. I mean, very well could be, but like I'm not like I'm not one to close my doors. Like I'm, I don't. I don't shut people out. I set boundaries. And if people are like butthurt by that, because like they want to go out on the town and get straight knockered, you know, it's like, Ooh, like go like live, live that part of your life. And then we can meet for coffee later, Mm -hmm. you know, but he's, he's a mess. He's, (laughs) he's, he's just a, he's a, he's a mess. Okay. So you think he's Um, like, he's not going to show up today? I'm sure he's in bed. If he, if he wants to, if he wants to drop by, then that's on him. That's his prerogative. I did tell him about it. I just, he's, you know, he's, he's always at the pub until are we keeping closing time. <laughs> What's that? Somebody said, how are you keeping a straight face? I said, are we? Well, are we? And what is there to laugh about? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and also yeah. what would be funny? I'm yeah. talking about this like really painful friend breakup that I've had. <laughs> so what are you? <laughs> so what are you referring to, ma'am? I love it. Who said that? Where did it go? Mahama. Mahama. <laughs> Mahama. I I don't know what you're talking about. So uh, well. maybe maybe why don't you guys at home keep your own straight face and I will cry because I'm in pain because I lost my friend. <laughs> You guys will you'll reconcile one day. I'm sure. We'll we'll figure it out one day. I feel like he needs to like cool it though. He's still behaving like he's just like, you know, a twenty five year old transplant in New York, like on the town, and I'm like, you can't keep doing this to yourself. You're a mess. Maybe you guys could get put on a project together. Maybe. Um you know. <laughs> I would feel like I was sort of betraying uh, Teddy, you know. Oh, um, well, he, both mm. myself and Jacob, <laughs> um, you know, because they're we're, it's it's just it's just you know people change, and I just want to I just want to make sure me and me and Teddy are still pals. He and Teddy are still pals. I don't want to break them up, you know. We definitely um, cannot do that. No, that would just be awful. So how many how many projects has Jacob and Teddy worked on together? It's been a lot, right? I don't know. I mean, like, it's as if I'm this guy's assistant. Um, <laughs> he, they, they, they work a lot together. Um, Me too. Uh, you know, I always considered Teddy to be my bestie. Um, but, uh, but they, yeah, they've, they've probably done, somebody counted at one point, they've probably done like a dozen together at this point between like eight and 12 or something. I was going to guess about a dozen. Yeah. Yeah. There are some that go under the radar. Again, I don't listen to these. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, but you know, they're, you know, they're, they're buds. So you can do a pretty good impression of Teddy too. Don't you? Yeah, so. you're good. You're good at that with lots of people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The best ones with Teddy, though, because Teddy is because uh, I've spent the most time with him in life. And he's just really. <laughs> you can sound just. <laughs> he's sort of. It's more about. No, I'm losing it. Wait, 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 wait. I, I haven't seen him in a while. Wait, hold on. Let me practice. Hold on. I'm gonna turn off my mic. <laughs> Cannot hear you. Oh, I love it. So he's like from the valley, but he sounds sort of like he's, uh, eh, he's, it's more when he says like Emma Wild. No, he gets a little bit more intense. And the, like when he starts to like really think about, you know, ah, there's something about, hmm, that's funny. No, because we were, <laughs> <laughs> I like the micro impressions. Yes, that's really good. Because I can't think of anything to say. <laughs> so it's just like, oh, yeah, well, no, 
uh, see, that's kind of. <laughs> it's really good. So silly. Yeah, it's the. It's tough with like an Andy Arndt because, like, you know, she has a beautiful voice mm-hmm. and it's very, like, you know, calming and stoic. And, and I, and like doing an impression of that is tough because, like, first of all, doing an impression of a woman is different because I don't want to, I just, I don't want to make fun of a woman. Um, <laughs> not that I want to make fun of Teddy, but like, I do. So it's, yeah. it's, 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 it proves difficult, but like, you know, you it, like, it's, you're already trying to fit into a certain slot in your register when you, when you're uh, doing an impression of a woman. So may, like the nuances are hard to get to. So I end up sometimes falling into like just my, what I, my voice I do for a woman. <laughs> uh, when, when you know, doing the female protagonist. Well, and you, you do a very good female voice. Thank you. It's very good. It's Thanks. very believable. Yeah, I, 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 I've heard that. I hope so. Um, I mean, you know, I don't know what I don't know what it is. I've like tried to like define, uh, like why that is. Mm-hmm. Um. But I don't know. It's like, uh, are you are you doing it or are you doing an impression of it? I think I think a good impression is like you're getting a sense of the person. You're not like just trying to sound like them, you know, because that can sound like a mockery. But like, you know, like so for instance, with a Teddy impression, it's like trying to get down the mannerisms, like get right. down the movement, and ah, like once you start moving, like. Ah, see there's not you know then like the the physicality of it is so essential you know oh megan that book is that book's rough. Mm. more with mm. you oh yeah Aww. bald i cried i cried <laughs> so much oh i love that they just made you into a maiden i know i like that uh britney said you can do a really good joe arden too uh. <laughs> uh. it's like it's like it's like high register growly somehow. It's like he's mm-hmm. growling in his nose. <laughs> wow, yeah. <laughs> uh, I always hit this where I'm like, I need like content to to do it. Mm-hmm. Well, let's just go to the bookcase, why don't we? Hmm. What do we have here? A brief history of time by Stephen Hawking. Hmm. Yeah, let's see what's in there. <laughs> you, that didn't sound excited. <laughs> that didn't sound like what you want. So that's exactly what we're going to use. Oh my God. Yeah, oh. let's do it. You'll make it entertaining. It would be great. Yeah, I will. Yeah, you're good at that. Is there enough light? <sighs> oh, yeah. Your light's fine. All right, let's hear it. <laughs> yeah, I need to practice. <laughs> oh, this is too much fun. Yeah, I always hated reading out loud. I still hate reading out loud. Yeah, catch some feelings for me, but I don't know that I. I don't think this is it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Not a good section. Maybe that that's would be fun if Joe were to pop in here during this moment. <laughs> during the gravitational collapse of a star to form a black hole, the movements would be much more rapid. So the rate at which energy is carried away would be much high. Is that it? I haven't. No, I know it's not. Damn it. <laughs> oh. Oh. Read it as Shane. Somebody said that. There was, however, a different <laughs> interpretation of Israel's. I love this. It sounds more like, mm, like if he was like James Bond or something. No, which was advocated by Roger Penrose and John Wheeler in particular. You know what the irony of that is? <laughs> that Stephen Hawking was English, but they gave him an American robot voice. Mm. 
Yeah. So that's the irony of that. <laughs> His rivals was no. I haven't done them in a long time. I I have I have Teddy on lock. I don't have I don't have. You do. You 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 have him on lock. I just I nobody I would ever need to do, nobody would ever need to do um do it spell narration with the two of you guys. Like, exactly. Keep it dual. Oh, that was perfect. Yeah, he's something. He's why is he from the valley? But he sounds like he's from uh 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 Missouri. <laughs> uh, 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 and <laughs> oh, it's so good. Maybe he'll pop yeah. in and say hi to us later. Yeah, Rusty. Whatever, BB. <laughs> hey, do you have a favorite trope that you like to narrate? Sexy sex. I like when it's sex and there's sexy sex. When there's sexy sex happening. Is that a trope? <laughs> you know how in a romance there when there's sex? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes. That really that really gets that really gets my gullet. Um um I mean <laughs> the lines are blurred with like you know actual kink it's kind of like <laughs> it's like a oh god i don't know i'm embarrassed <laughs> you're embarrassed i'm always embarrassed are you oh my god oh my god do you get embarrassed when someone compliments you yeah yeah because you don't know how to respond to it it's it's <sighs> Yeah, I mean, no, I don't know how to respond to it. I'm afraid that I won't sound legit in my thanks. Uh. And also that, like, part of it is that I'm, uh, I, I, I've been a cynical person a while, so I think, like, if I can weasel my way out of a compliment, either then or later, then I will. <laughs> like, I'll, like, I'll, I'll, I'll let it be i'll find the negativity somehow <laughs> i'll find the like oh this is only this um this is only a fraction of blah i mean it's different now because like you know i've done this long enough and re received enough that i'm just inundated with compliments all the time right. which is really really cool I It's not what I expected. Yeah. Um, so is that one of the reasons when you post pictures of yourself on social media, you're never smiling because you don't you you're not sure what the response is going to be with the compliments. Mm, I just said you just look angry or sad. <laughs> <laughs> Copy. Um, I am. <laughs> it's because I usually don't smile for photos. And that's because I don't like my smile freeze frame. Like I can laugh on camera. <laughs> but I can't like, I don't, I can't like get a smile and then hold it. I'm not a very good, let's Is just say I'm not a very good Texas boy. That's a uh, Chandler from friends. Is, was that his thing? Like that. My husband has the awkward smile. Where he's like, <laughs> where he has a hard time smiling in photos. This is how I smile for camera. This is how I smile for the camera. Yeah, that's great. No, it's not. I'm sure. not really. <laughs> I'm not really. It's not how I look when I'm happy, you know? Like, when I'm happy, I'm like, ah, like I look crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Texas. Which people are asking, how do people not know I'm from Texas? I'm obvious, obviously, I'm from fucking Texas. Um, I'm from that Fort is Worth. not a Texas accent. <laughs> Come on. I know. You I'm really don't Fort have... I mean, I if I just heard you speaking, I would not have guessed Texas. D correct. Um, you worked I, hard. You're getting rid of that, huh? I didn't even work hard. They beat it out of me in college. Mm. Because it was like, you know, uh, especially if you're doing Shakespeare... Even if you have a little bit, it's kind of like a, uh, that. Yeah, you can't say a half penny farthing. It's a half penny, penny, pa, a, penny. A, which of course, like 
my girlfriend in college was from New Jersey, so she could say eh all day, not eh, Mm -hmm. penny. Put the penny on the bench, you know? So did you you study acting when you were in college? Yeah, yeah, I studied drama at NYU. And you still get to do acting now, right? Yeah. Not just voice acting. But actually, acting on stage or on film. Yeah, on occasion. Well, not not much stage anymore. Um, there's not a lot of options for that in LA. Um, but I do. I mean, I'll do like a friend's short film or a movie every now and then. It's just like a. I I, I have nice boundaries around that because I used to just do shit for free all the time, and now I'm like, no, it's no. no I'm I'm gonna you're gonna pay me. Um, mm-hmm. And so, therefore, I rarely do it. Because <laughs> people don't want to pay you? or Because people don't want to pay anybody unless they have backing from a rather large source. That, sure. So there's, like, pluses and minuses to the audiobook world in that, like, not everybody comes from entertainment. And that can be a good thing because people are like, oh, you should be paid for this because it's work and it's good and you deserve it because you're working hard blah 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 mm-hmm. um uh in hollywood there's an there is a a rather there's like an intern mentality where it's like you gotta fucking trudge mm-hmm. and do whatever anybody asks you to do for a long time before your worth is recognized and then you're like then there's somebody paying you real bucks and then you're basically just rolling the dice over and over and over again until something comes along that like really bankrolls you right because they'll find somebody else to do it if you're not going to do it yes and you have to therefore just like lick some boots and and it's like it was just just so exhausting um and then like you know the cons of 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 being an actor in a world in which people don't come from entertainment mostly are like you know they don't recognize quite you you get people that are like that are like this is the coolest thing ever and i love that you do this and uh, therefore i'm going to pay you plenty um and then there's the other side of like people who just don't get how much it screws with your time how different it is from you know screen acting um how much little how little we're paid in comparison to like, you know, an actor on TV. Um, And then the other thing being like, you know, it, it like, I I hear this from like, like I have a friend whose uh, boyfriend is a film producer and he produces like big action films. And like, he knew I did audiobooks, but then he was like, Oh, you're an actor too. When I said I was doing that movie last year, I was like, there's, they're synonymous. What are you doing? Like, and, and, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, especially if somebody like doesn't spend time in, in entertainment, but this guy is in entertainment. He just devalues voice acting that much Mm -hmm. that it's like not even acting to him. Right. Um, Well, I hope he sees this. If he doesn't listen to them himself, I mean, there could just be a level of, you know, lack of education in that area or I mean for years I've had friends tell me you should try an audiobook Tiffany. I really think you would enjoy it. Mm-hmm. My ignorant assumption was that one, it would be boring. And two, mm-hmm. I don't want someone just to read me a story. Like why? When I can read it myself. Like why? <laughs> right. Yeah. And the I imagination. Was convinced. I was convinced I was not going to enjoy it. And then I And look at you now. And look at me now. <laughs> Completely obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I mean, and that's part of the reason why I've been doing what I do. I try to encourage people to give it a try because I was so in the dark about how it actually is acting. And yeah. the different way that it brings a story to life and how different it is from just reading. Because I've read a book and then I've gone and listened to the audiobook. Mm-hmm. Every time I enjoy the story even more and it hits me differently. It hits me different emotionally. Yeah. Yeah. 
so part of the part of the thing is like <clears throat> and like we still this happens in like every other facet of life is like our pre-existing notions of whether or not or if something's legitimacy you know mm -hmm. um and like that still that pertains to what we were talking about because that still is stuck in my mind mm -hmm. this is where my mind is um <laughs> that's right. still stuck in my mind <laughs> um the the idea that like you know uh, i like i'm not real famous I know like there are thousands of people that love what I do. Um but like it's not fame. It's like, well, what is what is it? What is fame? What is what is it then? Um and just because it's not one million people uh doesn't make doesn't mean it's not some sort of fame, perhaps. But my perception of what what success was before <clears throat> this was very skewed very very skewed because i thought i had to like <laughs> I, thought, I thought like by the time i was you know 40 i'd be nominated for an oscar mm. um that's probably not gonna happen and it might it, it probably never will happen it probably won't even get anywhere near it and that's fine and knowing that that's fine is the is the tricky part <laughs> <laughs> and that i had to like settle into like no this is a really good job and people really love it and that's the theoretical beyonce theory <laughs> but you have won audis i do yeah which right the oscars of audiobooks this is true and maybe if i'd been there to receive them i'd feel differently because <laughs> it happened during the pandemic right yeah yeah i mean they still had a i'm pretty sure they still had a ceremony but i also there was another one wasn't there another one have I won two Audis? I don't even know. Um, I can't remember. This is another one of those instances where, like, I don't get it. Where's the goddamn email? <laughs> no one tells me. And then all of a sudden I get this big black triangle in the mail. <laughs> it's like, oh, cool. Okay. Well, do they have your email address? Or are they getting it confused with somebody else's email address? Is it my fault that they <laughs> jumped? <laughs> I get sincerely mad at you. <laughs> yeah. You look good. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, does Jacob have it? Yeah, maybe. That's what Jessica asked. Does Jacob have a, an Audi? Or maybe they maybe they just had his email address. Oh, Not maybe they have his. Yeah. Yeah, maybe they're just mixing us both up. <laughs> hmm. Maybe. Maybe they're so crazy that they're doing something like that. Hey, are, is there any content that you will not do that you yeah. won't narrate? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I've been backing off of like the, uh, you know, imprisonment stuff. Uh, when there's, what's the, what's the word for it? When the lines get blurred, the, uh, uh, Dubcon? Dubious? Dubcon. Yeah, yeah I just... What is that? <laughs> there it is. See, I didn't even remember what it's called. Um, I... I, I have to, like... Huh? Uh, Dubcon. Dubious consent. Just Dubious like, consent. Yeah. 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 yeah, I... Um, I... I know, say, like, you gotta tell me if there's any of that. And it's got... It's just got to meet a lot of factors, you know, because like if it's if it's dubious consent and, uh, you know, arranged marriage or forced marriage and then like, uh, you know, age gap all at the same time. I'm like, ah. I have to be able to get a little horny about it. You know what I mean? And I can't get horny about that. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> and now I understand if other people can get horny about it. And it's totally fine. Great. But mm -hmm. I can't live in that fantasy with you. If it's just one of those things, then it's like, okay. Okay. I see. Okay. So so <laughs> how do you how do you find the information? Do you just ask the author a lot of questions since you don't necessarily read the material ahead of time? 
Well, I am usually talking to like the producers. So like there's like, you know, people at Lyric and people when I stand and they and they'll they you know, know my limits or they know generally what narrators are hesitant about. Mm-hmm. So they like list it. Only a few times has one slipped through the cracks where like the author wasn't telling them really what's going on. And I've had to be like, sorry. Uh nope. Yeah. Um and we're not gonna name names because I don't remember their names. <laughs> um <laughs> so it's you know, it's it's hmm? yeah. I said there's too many. There's too many. But also, uh, but, but when assessing whether or not I'm going to do it, it's just how many f- of those factors are lining up, you know, like how, how many, how many th- things you're trying to pile on here. Hmm. So how many books do you think you've narrated at this point? One million. No. <laughs> I think I've done 500. I was going to say five or maybe close to 600. And most of them are romance, but you've done some outside of romance. Yeah. 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 I, the thing is like, I like, I got all proud of myself. I think when I did hit 500, because I was like, who's saying hi? Uh, Abby Jimenez. Hi, Abby. Uh, Oh my God. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god! And that wasn't even like a good burp. That was like a I'm really hungry burp. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Abby, now, got, now you know what it's like in the booth. Hello, ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I saying? Uh, uh, outside of romance, na- how many books you've narrated? Oh yeah, very few. But no, I was saying that the like. I was so proud of myself for hitting the 500 mark because they're like seasoned audiobook narrators who haven't done that. I'm like, well, they were doing like, you know, at times 700 page, just them narrating the whole thing sort of situations. Mm. And like, it's very rare that I'm doing that. I'm usually like, you know, just like 10 chapters. The guy comes in, he swoops in and they fuck and they, they're <laughs> in love and they marry and it's great. And goodbye. And there's Done a, and there's a baby and then day, yeah. done in a day and a half. And God, how many times have I been married and fallen in love and oh, screwed and had a baby you at have this point? So many children right now. I've lived so many lives. You're broke with all that child support. <laughs> oh, the weight of the world is on my shoulders. So many. <sighs> oh, bookish Emily. I, we kind of got off track. We were asking favorite tropes. Like, do you like enemies to lovers? Do you like... Yeah, uh, list them. <laughs> I like enemies to lovers. Enemies I like lovers. enemies to lovers. Friends that was to one... lovers. Hey, Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> Where the, friends, the friends to lovers, like, eh, I could do without. Um, oh, I I've never, that. like... <laughs> That's probably my favorite. Is it really? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think I, I just... When I'm firmly friends with someone I usually that usually means I'm not attracted to them in that way anymore mm. but some but of enemies <laughs> but someone I off. hate now that's exciting <laughs> um. <laughs> well see that was that's my story with my husband we've been together almost 20 years mm-hmm. and we were really good friends and it just slowly developed into something more there so. you go there you go see in my that's never happened in my experience i've tried to make that happen where i was like hey you know i really love this person i care about him and yeah we're attracted to each other so let's try it and then it ends in disaster Uh, so maybe that's just my thing (laughs) your favorite trope things written by sierra simone oh yep can we talk about that for a minute no just kidding yeah please (laughs) Um, so priest, sinner, saint. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Him. No, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I, um, we can just, whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't matter anymore. Clearly. clearly. It doesn't matter. I tried to make it matter. It's now, so hard. It's his so name's hard. on the goddamn award and it's in my studio. What am I supposed to do now? 
What am I supposed to do? It is so hard. Um, (laughs) It's fine. Um, I love Sierra Simone so much um, because of what we're talking about. Like she, she plays with the lines of like, whoa, is that okay? And it's like, and she makes it okay. Oh, and so much metaphor. So yeah. Metaphor. Ugh. So I have not listened to Saint yet. I've gone through the first two. Sinner about okay. broke me. I was crying in my car. <laughs> uh, it was just beautiful. The way it was written, the the pain, the struggle. Um, yeah. And you just really brought it to life. So. They, I mean, like it's you know that you have a you have a real winner when when like. <sighs> Because, like, I think the trick is when it toys with your own perceived boundaries and, like, makes you maybe takes you out of your comfort zone a little bit. Mm. And then you just fall to it and you allow yourself to be vulnerable with that. Then you can then 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 magic can come about, you know, when you're creating something for entertainment purposes. And it really, frankly, that's a lesson for life. But and stuff like this it's like oh because you're because then the catharsis comes because you didn't know you needed it right and it's so exciting it's beautiful it was so relatable too and i think door of bruises too oh my god so good door of bruises that's her her thorn chapel series oh yes i loved doing those because i got to do accents all fucking day oh which accents are they uh, there was West Country, England, and then more posh Londoner, like re, um, uh, you know, like uh, RP. There was some, you know, sort of uh, very formal. Um, there were young people, like sort of a. It was like it was like a. It was just like a bunch of Jude Laws. <laughs> Jude Laws. Yeah. Oh well, I mean, he's great. Yeah, yeah, he is. Let's see. I'm just looking at questions to see if there's anything that we've missed. There's been so much conversation. I don't want to keep you too long. If you need to go, I feel free to say probably. Should. Tiff, I'm out. Yeah. Well, can I? If I close out a TikTok, does it take me out of the live? Yes. I just need to check. <laughs> I just need to, I just need to check. I don't have anything to do. I have to go to the bathroom. (laughs) (laughs) Just put me on pause. I really have to go to the bathroom. You can put me on pause. Put you on pause? Or, I'm sorry, put yourself on pause. Okay. Okay. You go look for questions and I'll go to the bathroom. Okay, that sounds great. I'm going to go check on these dogs. (laughs) Oh, who's having fun? This is great. (laughs) I just saw a notification pop up. Oh, are you guys having fun? Yes. Love him, right? So much fun. He is delightful. So I have a couple of questions left still on my list because, you know, we've just been talking about all of the fun things. Um, so if you guys pop some up in there, I will, I've got my pen and I try to jot down some notes so we can try to get to a couple of other questions. Let's see. Oh, okay. I've got, I have two more on my list. We need Zachary and Teddy together. We do. I, I actually sent Teddy a message saying, Hey, we're doing this today. You want to pop in like Joe did on your first live to say, hey, but I don't know if he saw it. I sent it kind of late. So that was that was my fault. Want to know how long it takes him to record a book. Oh, yeah. I wonder what his uh, ratio is. Let's ask that. My ratio is a nightmare. So you could hear me this whole time? No, I just came back. I just heard that. Yeah, yeah Abby was asking how long it takes you to record a book. So That's you're a perfect band. hour ratio. Are you two no. to one or three to one? We can't discuss that. 
We don't discuss that publicly. Um, no, I, um, it's not good. It, it wavers severely. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I read so fast and I am a perfectionist. So like, I, I just, I don't like to screw up. So I try not to never screw up. <laughs> um, but because I just try and like get, get through it. And then like, so I can have a break. Then I, then it ends up if the breaks go too long, then it, then it pushes my, my time over. Um, I read rather fast. Um, but I, but I am too ADHD to, to sit there Uh for very long. So it's hard. Um, I get distracted. It's interesting to watch the path of my own thoughts. I, 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 yeah, I have ADHD as well. I got diagnosed just a couple of years ago. Oh, really? Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Medication has helped me so much. Oh, that's wonderful. That's great. Yeah, I try and meditate like throughout the day, like whenever I can, when I'm doing anything. Um, but I, I don't do, I don't, I don't sit down for it. <laughs> um, I mean, I do sometimes, but like, like I'll just. It's, it's just a matter of like, when are you choosing to do nothing? You know, when are you choosing to really allow yourself to be bored? Right. Um, just catching my own racing thoughts is, is, is a challenge. Yeah. It's really tough, but it's, it's, it is profoundly useful to, to look at it and not judge it. Mm. Cause it can't be helped. Uh, let's see. Uh, do you go in blind to a book or do you like to prep it first? Um, I usually go in blind. Um, I have now said this so many times. <laughs> I was told so many times not to say it. And now I say it all the time. Um, I, I, I just, I don't know how I'd have the time to do that and do anything else. Um, so really, I just like I I and it's also profoundly helpful for performance because then you're things you're surprised by things. Mm-hmm. Um, but has and, it been, have to go back and re-record if you didn't plan something or you didn't know that something was going to happen? On occasion, if well, usually that's just if a name is not pronounced how it's spelled or so it's it's like mm-hmm. there was a choice and you didn't ask the author. Usually, I just like I'm like, just give me a list. How if there are weird pronunciations that I can't find online and if there's an accent that someone has to have or anyone has to have at any point, if I know those things, then it's fine. Mm. Because I like, you know, if you read enough, then you you get the feel for like how things are going to go. And then if you're surprised, then you're legitimately surprised. Sure. So my assumptions are actually pretty useful because like if I'm like, this is how this is going to go happy go lucky and then like stab you know then then i'm getting stabbed yeah yeah do the massive notes i send you help <laughs> no just kidding yeah uh, they're the <laughs> um it, more notes than you think are necessary is best mm-hmm. for authors um but that being said sometimes when i get like a lot of notes and they don't pertain to the things that I immediately need, <laughs> then it's frustrating. But like, you know, there's uh, things slip through. Things are going to slip through anyway, even if you do all the studying in the world and spend all your time doing it. I'm like, no, I am, I am going to let these things wash over me. And, and I think the product ends up being pretty cool. So how many books a week do you usually schedule for yourself? <sighs> I, I usually, tr- I'm trying to cut back. <laughs> I'm trying to cut back to just two, two a week. Um, so that I can, I just, my life ends up so messy if I work too much. Um, so like, yes, I need an assistant, um, probably a one a week, one, once a week sort of deal. But I also just like, I forego, like, when I'm working, then I, like, want to rest when I'm home. So, like, 
now I'm like, okay, I can spend the weekend like taking care of stuff. Um, and, and I, I do that now. I'm tr- still figuring out how to live mm-hmm. and it's, it's very, it's kind of nice. Like I, I like having a little bit more free time now, but there was a time when I was just stacking them on top because I just wanted to make as much money as possible. <laughs> and it's like, no, it's going to wear you out. Yeah. Well, it helps that you don't have a home booth either. It does. So when you leave your work, you leave your work. Mm-hmm. So that mm-hmm. has- but that also screws me up sometimes because like if I'm, for instance, going to Massachusetts with my former bandmates and we all were staying at a house that's right by the loud Atlantic Ocean and there's nowhere to record, you know, literally one pickup, then you got to do it a week and a half later. Mm. And I've done that. And that did happen. <laughs> How many pickups do you usually get? Is that uh, Brittany and somebody else here said that you don't really have to do too many? No, very few. That's very, good. Very few. Yeah, it's good. It's cool. It's, uh, Has that just know. come with experience, you think? I think so. I've never gotten too many. Like I said, like being a perfectionist is not necessarily always it it's not necessarily what am I trying to say it doesn't feel good but it but it makes for you know good uh timing in the future yeah yeah um another question that popped up was do you prefer dual or Hmm. It's a different I, record, right? I mean, it's a little different because when you're doing yeah. dual, for those of you who might not know, so dual narration means um, a narrator is going to cover the entire chapter and do both points of view for male and female and do voices. And duet, they are not doing that. Yeah. In duet, you're just doing uh, all the all the characters of your gender, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, That point of view. Yeah. And I don't know. It's like duet kind of like tends to like feel like it's flying by and you get more of the story and it's flying by. So it's like this weird convergence. So it's like kind of cool. But you, I don't know. It's like I, 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 my, my need for control kind of kicks in because <laughs> then I'm like, oh, but I'm not really doing like the whole scene every time, mm-hmm. you know? And like in Duel, you can control the narrative a little bit, you know? Mm-hmm. Which really, when I control the narrative, mm-hmm. it just means like do the narrative, <laughs> like tell the, like, or show the narrative. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I don't really have a preference either way. We need a Jetty duet. Oh, but they we were talking about that earlier, Brittany. They do such a good job of No mix- Jetty duets. Yeah, I know. Because they 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 match the voice so well. Mm-hmm. I feel like it needs Well to he happen. tries. <laughs> no, he does a good job. Uh what does the process usually look like with your co narrator? Do you communicate with them? ahead of time yeah usually it's brief i think like everybody's kind of like especially if you're working with somebody you work with all the time then it's like you don't need to you don't need to really ask them what they're doing because you because you like know what they sound like and usually know what they'll do for whatever character so it's it's helpful sometimes um but what about with a new narrator you've never worked with before? Then usually I'll I'll like look them up and hear what they sound like and talk to the talk to their or you know correspond with them about what their plans are for certain characters. But a lot of the time, like the books, like the email that I that everyone gets so often is like it's pretty straightforward, you know, where it's like you're gonna do your standard, you know, wealthy dad from Connecticut for this wealthy dad from Connecticut. So like everybody's going to do their wealthy dad from Connecticut. It's probably going to sound relatively similar, Uh you know, a little lower and, you know, you go, you, you have your, 
uh, your stereotype. There's a reason those archetypes exist is because like everybody has a mental image of it. Is your mental image of it connecting to your oral version of it? Probably. So just both of you just do that. And I don't need to hear what, you know, somebody's uh, a newer narrator is going to do for that. Cause we're probably going to do a very similar thing. But if it's like, you know, if, if it's like, there's an Italian minstrel who's time traveled from 1812. <laughs> and he's here to say that he wants to be a, a native of Arkansas. Um, <laughs> then it's like, okay, that's specific. Let's work on that together. That's very specific. <laughs> <laughs> a, Venice, a Venice minstrel in King Arthur in... Uh, God, I don't know. It's really dumb. It's really, really stupid. I mean, you, you came up with that pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah, I came up with that horrible thing really fast. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, Kiwi accent? See, th this is a good example of, like, who can you point to in culture who, who yeah. sounds like this? And the best way to go about it is to just do sort of Flight of the Concords. Mm. And, you know, nah, that's more Australian. See, I don't have that much practice, but I but I did watch all of Flight of the Concords last year. So I've got it down a bit. A bit. A bit. We're near perfect. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, Kiwi's fun. So do you, just in real life, when you're hanging out with new people, do you find yourself copying their voices a lot? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes too. I like that. That's so fun. It is. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes it's really... Sometimes people get... Sometimes people get upset. There was one time I met... I was with my friend Dana and we met up with this like fucking this English musician guy and he was like in like a, like a, you know, pop punk band and really tattooed and just kind of like, you know, that kind of guy, uh, that I don't, I don't really remember where he's from, but he's, I think he was full like that, you know, like short, whatever that is. Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. Uh, he, he like basically just sounded like a modern Mick Jagger. Hmm. I don't know, you know, like where, if you want tacos, then we'll go get back. <laughs> um, um, and he, he, I, I was impersonating him. Uh, uh, um, and then, but then oh. his friend, oh, uh, hit. You're fine. You just pause for a second. Have a do. Um, and, uh, but his friend was upset that I was, his American friend was upset that I was imitating him. I was like, oh, no, no, no. I do audiobooks. <laughs> it's okay because I do audiobooks. <laughs> Yeah, it's okay. He's like, oh, okay. But I, <laughs> so the excuse is there, preset. Yeah. But I, but like most of the time, you know, like I've impressed many Aussies by just straight doing it, you know. Have you been recognized by your voice out in public? Where someone says, you sound really familiar. Just one time. Just one time. One There's time. This, there was this girl one time who was like in town in LA and it was like probably 2016 and she recognized me from gray and she was really cute. <laughs> so I was like, Oh my God. Wow. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> she was like, I recognize that voice. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, I think I got her number and then I think she didn't and then I think she didn't text me back no she did she did but she was like leaving the next day uh, met her at a bar there's a girl at a bar that's the only time that is so interesting to me yeah I find a, lot it fascinating of, a lot of people well. say that that they don't because there is there is a difference normal speaking voice yes yeah narration voice character especially out context out at a bar, out at a bar, out at a bar, you're going to be talking at this level. And like, you know, I, this is not what I sound like when I'm, you know, 
Right. That's that like like ah uh, it's very di- <laughs> ah, this is me in public. Hey welcome to me. Hello everyone. So of course they're not gonna recognize it. This is true. <laughs> this is <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, we talked about compliments earlier, and I meant to ask this. Like, what what is one of the best compliments that you've received about your work? Um, Sorry, I got to tr- plug this phone in. Hum, 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 hum. Because I assume you have people telling you all the time how much they love your voice. Uh, the best compliment? Yeah. Um... Or something that's really meant a lot to you. The types of compliments that mean something more than what I know you hear all the time. I think usually when it's like, when it's super specific to that person and they like, (laughs) I don't want anybody to start like giving me these types of compliments on purpose just because I said this. But like, if, if like a specific book helped a person through a time, then it's like, wow, I certainly did not expect that book to help a person get through that kind of thing. You know, like, you know, it's, it's very, it's a little cheesy, you know, to say, I think, because I'm like, well, it's not because of me, it's because it happened. But like, you know, if, if listening to an audiobook calmed someone during a period of like severe depression or like, you know, they're in chemo or. <laughs> you keep hitting the pause button. Sorry, my grandma called me. Keep hitting the pause button. My grandma called me right in the middle. Can you hear me? Oh, it's going to be messed up now. Am I there? Uh-huh. Oh, Wait, hold. it's going to be messed up now. Mm-hmm. Wait, hold. Okay. Hey, here's how you am I there? Okay, here's how you here's fix how you it. Out. And Here's how you, fix- you have to go out, and then I'll bring. Okay. All right. Yeah, I hate when that happens. I actually forgot to put turn off my notifications too. Like nobody call me. I mean, nobody ever calls me. Books are therapeutic. I agree, especially audiobooks. Okay. Perfect. Hi. My grandma called me. Aw. Yeah. I just saw her, so she needs to chill. That's sweet. Yeah. I drove up to Santa Barbara to help her settle my great uncle's estate. Um, I was just there for a day. I just drove her from the airport up to the town he lived in. Um, <clears throat> and... Uh, So it was nice. I got to see her. It was very brief, but it was nice. That's sweet. I've lost all of my parents at this point. I'm so sorry. I'm losing my mom's parents. My my grandpa died in 2020 or 2021. And that was was my first grandparent I lost, really. Wow. So, yeah, they're... (laughs) I have a pretty young family. Um. So it, but it's, it's rough because it's really, it's really starting to happen. My grandma has Alzheimer's. She's, she's in, mm. she's in uh, a care facility now. So. Oh, that's so hard. Really hard. It's really hard. And I didn't, didn't think it would be this hard, but it is. <laughs> yeah, anybody who's gone through that. My grandfather had a little bit of that too. Just dementia. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really hard on the care too. Yeah, yeah. But to that point, you know, if if somebody like listens to an audiobook I've done and it gets them through that, you know, that's how I feel. That's the closest I can feel to any sort of celebrity because that's how I feel about my favorite bands. Like, I listen to really depressing music <laughs> and it's gotten me through some really rough times. It's really propelled me in a way because it's like affirming. Um so yeah so yeah that's that's the best that's the best thing i can hear from somebody is if it's if it's helped you 
get through mm. a tough time. So do you yeah. feel like you will continue with audiobooks for the for yeah. future? Just like this yeah. is this is it for you and Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean if like your music were to take off and I would have I mean I would hope that I that I would be welcomed back, you know, because music can take off and then you can make no money for however long. And you might I might never make any money. Um and then, you know, uh also, like, there's always a terminating element to a film career. There's a terminating element to all those things. If I can keep doing audiobooks, then I want to keep, I want it to at least be the fallback, you know? I'll, I'll do it forever. It's just like, if, I, if, I, if I'm going to make more money doing something else that's like something I've created, mm -hmm. then I'm going to take that avenue, obviously. I think that's what anyone would do. Yeah. But, but audiobooks are this great platform for me for for my life and i've i've i'm i'm so appreciative um that it is so i would never <laughs> it'll i just envision like some like like if i do end up moving beyond it um to do more creative pursuits of my own then hopefully it would be still there and i can come back and do it later and like you know i've always wanted to write a book so um, Ooh. you know, uh, if I start doing that, then that's an option too. Cause then it, then it just definitely doesn't go away because then oh, it, I'm combining yeah. both worlds. Yeah. You should write a book and then narrate it yourself. Yeah, I would. If I wrote a book, I would definitely narrate it myself. Mm, you have some ideas, right? A few little ones. They're dancing around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be so fun. Yeah, I, I mean, the ideas I have are like, you know, I'd be playing with audio, audiobooks as a genre, you know, it's not just like, and obviously it's because I want to tell a story, but it's more the, um, God, there's so much happening in my house still. It's more the... <laughs> The opportunity to, to, to also like do an audio play and like really like build things out because like now I can produce my own music. So I can, I can compose things. I can, I can create external sounds. You know, I don't know how open people are to hearing not just my voice, but like it would be, it'd be a lot of other elements. That would be really interesting. Cause I, yeah. I I think that's going to be the future of audiobooks anyway. Mm -hmm. Make a more immersive experience. Yeah. A lot of podcasts are doing that and it's super yeah. cool. I uh, I think a lot of it's very Ooh, a biography. Can it can be pretty heavy-handed, but there's yeah, there's a lot of a lot of options. What about a biography? Somebody have that? A biography. Hmm. Of whom? Oh, of myself? Yes, autobiography. Oh my god. <laughs> Um, elements and magic. I so staunchly disagree with like documentaries and and biographies and autobiographies about people that are under the age of like fifty. Um, so I'll definitely never do that. If someone decides to do that, then okay. But like, it it doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> well, just wait until you're fifty. Okay. Give it twenty more years. And I'll get some more practice writing other things, and then and I then guess. maybe we'll do that there. <laughs> Oh, or maybe yeah. uh, writing, you could collaborate with another author. Who would you want to Yeah, I saw somebody say uh, Zach Sierra uh, uh, collab, mm -hmm. which I think would be really cool. That would be super cool. That would yeah. be. Um, I hate to do this to you, but I think I got to go. I got. I have my roommate's dog. I have this menagerie of pets that's just suffering through all this loudness, and I got to go do something with them. Hey, you don't have to apologize. We we've been talking for a long time, so. But I apologize all the time when I don't have to apologize, so I might as well yeah. do it now. Yeah, no, you're totally fine. Thank you so much. This was so much fun. Thank you for having me. We'll see it again soon. Meeting you face to face. Yes. You know. Yeah. It has been lovely. Thank nice. you. All right. Well, have a good rest of your weekends. You and too. I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Mm-hmm. <laughs>